Hello, everyone. And this is Stacy from The Advisor. I'm very excited today because we have Kindle Travis here. She is part of our podcast community. She has her own podcast on our community. So you can go into her podcast. You can see all her previous podcasts. And she is a guru when it comes to real estate. She has such great information and she is just a doll. She is one of those people who truly cares about the consumer and people around her. So, you know, she is just wonderful to talk to. And she's always apt. She always tells me to tell people if they have a question, just hit her with it and she will answer because she really, really wants to help people. Even if they're not in her location, she will reach out to you and give you the best possible advice. So today we were talking before the show and she wants to talk about, do you want someone to represent you? There's a lot of things going on in the community today and uh, in our whole nation, actually, about real estate. And there's a lot of legal issues going on and a lot of things trended in the news. So she really wants to hit these things and explain to you what's going on and explain to you how important it is to have a real estate person in your life and why it's so important. So Kendall, take it away. Let everybody know a little about you and what's going on. Hi, Stacy. Thank you so much for having me back. Um, I think we want to talk today. There's big news that came out on Friday. Everybody is talking about this NAR, the National Association of Realtors lawsuit that came down on Friday. Um, I did not pay a ton of attention to it, even though my phone was exploding on Friday. Mm -hmm. um, I was working. Yeah. But um, after the weekend, I think after it all kind of came down and you read all the different articles, I think a lot of it, it's very sensationalized by the major news outlets. I think one of the headlines, one of the major papers was the day of the 6%. Um, commission is over, which, you know, wow, that's, that's to be determined. Um, I think what it did do is it generated a lot of conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I have had a lot of conversations with my clients um, that I'm working with now. They've asked me my opinion. We don't have any information other than we have to wait until July when all of this gets put into place in whatever form or fashion that will be. So what you and I were talking about before, um, you know, I'm licensed in New York, uh, in New York to be a uh, licensed real estate salesperson. I'm licensed as a realtor in Texas. They're different names, but they are the same thing. It's still a license, but the way we do business in both States is different. So in New York, when you're doing a contract or negotiating buyers and sellers in order to get together for a deal, you hand it off to an attorney. So it's considered an attorney state. When yeah. you're in Texas, we have what's called promulgated forms. It's a tongue twister, but they're mm -hmm. templates that are written by the Texas Association of Realtors, which are called TAR, or by the Texas Real Estate Commission. Um, and it's a fill in the blank contract there's lots of addendums and stuff for different changes but we write the contracts in texas so i think to say this is you know this national it all comes down it's all one way well it can't be one way every state does business differently yeah with their realtors or licensed real estate salespersons um so i think we have to just wait and see what happens mm-hmm but the summary, I guess, and conversations that I've been having with my clients is that Texas is a little different and we have all of these forms. So I think the questions are um, about how we get compensated and is 6% always fair? Is it needs to be negotiated? Well, in Texas, when we have a listing agreement, you want to sell your home and you want me to list it for you. We have an agreement that we present to our client and we walk our clients through the agreement of these are all the things that I'm going to do for you. I'm going to put it in the MLS. And then we go through our commission, which is blank. Right. And we have that conversation with our clients. Now that conversation will tell them, you know, whatever the prices of your home, where do they need to be? 
How soon do they need to move? All of this comes into, you know, how we get compensated, what kind of work are we doing, et cetera. It's not a flat rate ever. Right. And my brokerage, um, which is one of the brokerages that's owned by Berkshire Hathaway, which is home services, which is one of the last ones that was in the lawsuit, we have forms that state the commission. So once it's decided between the seller and the listing agent, then we write that in the contract and we are all in agreement. And then that commission, we say we want to offer half. If, if it is 6%, you offer three right. to the buyer's agent. Or if it's 5%, which we do 5%, we do 4%. I mean, it all depends. Yeah. What we do, and everybody's different, but we try in our brokerage to offer the buyer's agent as much as possible because the buyer's agent is going to bring you the deal. Mm -hmm. They're bringing you the client. They're writing the contracts. They're going to do, you know, they're going to organize to get, you know, inspectors in, roof people in. I mean, I will obviously help and say, okay, great. We'll try to get the, my sellers out of the home in order to get access, but yeah. they're doing the heavy lifting. They deserve to be paid um, for that. So I think all this has done is it's kind of brought it more out into the open. And I think what they're proposing in this lawsuit is they take that the commission is taken out of our MLS service. Mm -hmm. So in our MLS service, it will state that the buyer is going to be paid a certain, whatever the percentage is, it could be 1%, 2% on leases. It's another percentage, but it's what they would get compensated in order to bring a buyer for that deal. So, okay. If they don't put it in the MLS, where does it go? Well, right. you know, my first knee jerk reaction is based on my age. Um, you, you get on the phone and you call the agent. Right. And I'd say, Hey, Stacy, this is Kendall. I'm calling about your listing. Can you tell me about the listing? Can you tell me um, if I bring you a buyer, what kind of compensation is there? Is there compensation? Right. So I think, you know, there's tons of ways to do this. Nobody needs to, as long as we are up front, which we are with our forms in Texas. So yeah. to go on the other side, if I'm representing a buyer, I have what's called a buyer's representation agreement. That yeah. is a contract I will walk through with the buyer that goes through my compensation. And that will say how things are based now. Either I get shared compensation based on what the other listing agent is offering me. And if the other listing agent is not offering me any commission, right. it says in our buyer's reps form that the buyer is paying my commission okay. and they sign it and they agree to it. And it is a percentage. It's an amount. It's whatever we negotiate. That is something I go through with every single buyer. So this lawsuit, as it came down, is all about they they weren't aware they didn't feel they felt it was um not transparent mm. so i know how i run my business i know how businesses run in texas i'm not saying everybody does it exactly the same yeah but we have forms for that and we are open about it we do walk there's our buyer rep agreement, I think is four pages long. Um, right. I mean, there's a lot and you walk through all of it. And I just had a conversation with this investor that I've got a listing with him now. Um, and we walked through it. I mean, it's, it becomes, I think because it's out there and it's in writing, yeah. it takes the veil off of mystery mm -hmm. and it's not scary. It's an open conversation. You know, what are you comfortable with? And then it's also educating them. And I think you and I talked about this a little bit uh, at the at the beginning. So in Texas, it's different than New York. We have listings that are 3 million, 5 million, 10 million, 15 million. They're few and far between um, on the very high end range. But for the most part, 
when you're doing a listing that's that high, usually those are at a lower commission. Right. The, the listing agent will take, you know, a lot of times a lower commission. They offer the buyer's agent a higher commission because it's not, there's not thousands of buyers buying $15 million places. Yeah. So we, we are a fiduciary to our client. And I think that's the conversation that you need to have with your client. Like I need to do the best job for you. And in order for me to be successful in really selling your property and being able to get the most eyeballs possible, yeah, we need to compensate the person on the other end that's going to bring this buyer that's going to be worth gosh knows how much money. And they're probably going to, you know, maybe they pay in cash and they're quick close and they're going to do all the work, write all the contracts, all the addendums, bring the inspectors, yeah. bring in all the maintenance people. They need to be compensated for that. Oh, yeah. So I think, you know, all these people that say that buyers agents don't need to be paid. I'm like, I don't, I, I don't understand how that would work. Um, and I think the, sad thing or unfortunate thing that all of us realtors are talking about is what about all these first time home buyers? Yeah. So if they're, you know, think about your kids, Stacy, like they're trying to buy a place, let's say they meet Mr. Someone or Mrs. Someone special and they want to buy a home in New Jersey or Texas or wherever. Yeah. And they might be entry level buying a $300,000 home you know, do they have enough money saved up to pay my commission to, or to compensate me for my work to write the contract, to help them find the home, to walk them through this process. Right. Um, it's a job. We have to, we have to be paid for what we do. This is a livelihood. Yeah. Um, I'm licensed. We are all licensed. We have to get educated every two years. We have to go through continuing education. And I think, you know, we talk about this, like, you know, there's all these real estate shows out there. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, one scene, they look at three homes that are stunning. The next thing they open the house and they're like, done, write the contract. It's sold $4.5 million. You know, Kendall's commission was 150,000 or whatever it was. Right. And you're like, these agents do nothing. We do a lot. And I think this is where the conversation begins. Yes. Is that we need to be better about explaining all of the idiosyncrasies and small things that we do to get a deal done, to hold a deal together. You know, I tell people, I'm like, it's almost like being a psychiatrist, a hairdresser, because it's an emotional purchase. It is. You know, people get cold feet, people freak out, people lose financing in the middle of the deal. And then we yeah. have to call five other mortgage companies. There's so many nuances to this. It's unending amounts of constant um, negotiation, constant. Um, there's so many different moving parts because there's so many different players in a, in yeah. a deal. So I think this overall is going to be better for the industry um, I think it's going to force other agents to be more mindful of these people. They need to just understand what's happening. It's a yeah. huge purchase for someone and they just need to understand, okay, how much am I paying? How does this process work? What, what do you, what do your services provide? What are you going to do for me? And I think if you can walk somebody through that and really show your value, that is where people go, oh, yeah, I didn't realize all the things that these real estate agents do. Right. And it is an emotional roller coaster. Um, there's a lot of negotiating time slots and this time's not good and that time's not good. Well, that's fine. I'll leave this to go do that. I mean, it's just, there's a lot of coordinating to it. Um, and there's just all this behind the scenes, like I was talking about with the financing falling through, then there's sometimes there's liens on homes that, oops, I forgot. I didn't know about that. And then, you know, I sat in a title company on one deal for three days. Wow. Every day I went there to negotiate. How do we fix this? How do we fix this? How do we fix this? 
to try to get the deal done. I'm the yeah. listing agent, by the way. Hmm. The buyer's agent, you know, she, I was just like, look, I'm here to help you because I want to get this deal done. I'm here to facilitate this. We didn't know. And I am working through title. I had yeah. no idea how to untangle a lien, but I learned and right. we figured it out. And there, there's so many things you have to deal with. And I think what it's going to do now is spotlight that we have to show our value. And it's not an Instagram post that's a minute long. Yes. That I run you through a $4 million house and the deal's done and I get to walk away with the new Chanel bag. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, don't, I think a lot of times people, you know, it happens all the time, honestly. You, people don't, a lack of knowledge, people don't realize that, you know, how much work goes into, you know, being a lister and being a real estate agent. And they think it's just, you know, like you said, they see TV, they see things on the media and they think it's, you know, and the real, the, those reality shows glorify it. They don't show, mm -hmm. they don't show all the back end stuff that goes on. They're just, they're just showing little segments and they're putting them together and they're making the best segments and the most appealing segments, the ones that shine, but they're not looking at all the other stuff that goes with it, all the paperwork, all the, all the work that goes into it, all the effort and time, the running around that you have to do none of that gets shown, you know, mm -hmm. but, and that's the problem. It, it's just the lack of knowledge. If people don't have a knowledge in real estate, which most people don't, you know, especially, you know, it's all new to them, especially first buyers. And, and, you know, unless you're, you know, buying and flipping houses and you're, you're, you're in the industry, you don't really know what all these different things. So they're just, it, it's just assumptions, you know, people are making assumptions and they don't understand. It's a lack of knowledge. It definitely is a lack of knowledge, I think. And I think we will see the industry change. There is, you know, between AI, um, the internet, everything that we've got out there, you know, when I think about some of these um, internet-based companies, Redfin, Open Door, um, there's space for them. Yeah. And I just got an email from somebody that said, you know, we need to look at AI and putting templates on the blockchain, which I'm like, what? Yeah. But I think it will become maybe more segmented. So there is room for, let's say we can template, you know, investor type properties that are, like you said, that's like a flip. Okay. It's this kind of home. Maybe it's fill in the blank which I still can't really get my head around because I have yet to write the same type of contract twice. Right. And I've been doing this since 2012. Right. Wow. It's never happened. So I know that I, it's maybe just an, a segment I might not be in. I'm sure there's a segment out there that's kind of a little bit more cookie cutter. Yeah. Um, you know, you read about these big, huge black rock and, I don't remember the big name companies. They figured out ways to buy blocks of hundreds of thousands of homes. I'm sure they're not individual agents going out there negotiating deals. They probably found a better way to do it. Yeah. Um, so I think there is room for it, but I think for all the individual people that are still buying and yeah. they're not buying for the masses or buying for an investment group, I don't understand how you can't, have someone representing you and saying, you know, like every page on our contract, there's blanks and things to fill in. Like, well, do you want your option period to be three, three days or five days? Well, then you come exactly. back and you're like, well, I need it seven because of X. Okay, cool. We need to have this conversation because I need to go back to the listing agent and say, we need seven days for option because Stacy's doing this. She's traveling. She's not have access to her phone, whatever. Like, that's one blank I have to negotiate. Then yes. you go to, you know, earnest money, this, title companies. There's so many different nuances in every single contract and every addendum that you have to write when you have to move dates. Yeah. I, I think people don't understand until they're in a deal and maybe people that need to think about maybe when they were in a deal, like, yeah. do you really realize what that real estate agent did? Or do you think that you just said, I want that house 
And then magically the next day they came back and they're like, done, sold, it's the exact price that you wanted. Here's your contract and just show up in 30 days for the keys. Like exactly. when does that happen for anyone? So I think it's like when you are in, it's like, it's, it's a past, it's a past thought. Yeah. You know, you kind of forget what happened about that deal when it's mm -hmm. like, oh, I've been in this house for six years. Yeah. But if you really think about it, if it's maybe people that have done a more recent deal. Yeah. Maybe they're going to be like, oh yeah, I do remember the agent called me like seven times. Like, what about right. this? What about this? Do you want to do this? What did your husband think about that? Or let's organize this for your kids or blah, blah. You know, there's, there's so many different nuances to yeah. these deals. And I, I, you know, I, I just, I hope that people can see this as an opportunity to maybe ask their realtor. Yeah. Ask your agent. Like if, if you feel like you don't see any value in what we do, then whoever your real estate agent is, ask them. Exactly. Have the conversation and say, you know, like, I, I'm sorry. I don't understand what, what your role, what your role is. Can yeah. you explain to me? And I sure as heck hope that they can and tell you what their value is and show you what their value is so that they can represent you and help you get, you know, the home of your dreams and make it a smooth process. Right. Exactly. And it, yeah. And it's, it's no picnic TV show. Ever. No. <laughs> Never. No, I, I, I think it's just a lack of knowledge. I think, I think we need to, you know, keep educating people like, like these podcasts we're having right now. I mean, you're talking to each other. I think people have to understand, you know, what really goes on behind the scenes because, you know, then like you said, you know, people probably do forget, you know, and, you know, I, I was never an easy task. Anytime I bought a home, it was never an easy task. It was going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You know, one thing comes up, another thing comes up and you're trying to negotiate something, you know, and it's, it's you know, it's constantly going back and forth, back and forth, but you're not the one going back and forth. You're going to your real estate agent, telling your real estate right. agent, and they're the ones who are doing all the negotiating and they're the ones trying to get you the best deal. Now think about that. If I was to do that on my own, I don't even know how to approach them the right way. So I get the best deal. But if you have someone in the real estate business that knows exactly how to word it, how to say it, how to get it, because there's always a way to set things up in with your verbiage that will get you further. If you're just a person who doesn't understand real estate and you know you're going you you're trying you want to get a better deal, you can't just pick up the phone and say, "Hey, I want this and this and this and this." The other person is going to tell you to go screw yourself. No, this is how it is and blah 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 blah. But then if you get a real estate agent that you know is talking to you and knows exactly how to word it and kind of smoothly, you know, talk about the pros and cons and, you know, it won't you know, we'll know how to kind of smooth talk and make things happen where most likely you're not most people will not make things happen and most people you know especially in today's world communication skills a lot of people suck at it and they you know and and they have to really know how to talk to people because even when you're selling a house there's a lot of stress going on there's a lot of emotional stress going on between the the real estate agents are under a lot of stress and the buyers are under a lot of stress and the listers are under stress because you're going to have to be packing you're going to have to do this you're going to have to find yourself a home and you're going to have to unpack all these different things that you got to do are going on. So there's a lot of stress in that whole environment. So how are you going to handle all that stress and try to sell your home and try to communicate at the same time and then do all the paperwork? To me, that, mm -hmm. that sounds like insanity. It sounds like I wanna, I'm ready to like, you know, just shoot me now kind of thing, you know? And, you know, I just like, you need your, you need your real estate agent, you know? Yeah, yeah I, and there's like things that we think of constantly because we're in the business you know yeah if we see an inspection report that comes across where the foundation is damaged yes mm -hmm. like I, you know i'll be like well we need to get a foundation guy out here because yeah. this could be a potential big deal it could be a deal breaker right you know there's certain things that we know yeah that i'm like i know you love this house <sighs> But you want me to represent you. We need to get a foundation expert out. And if he says not good, we need to be prepared to walk. Yes. 
or we need to be prepared to whatever he recommends. If it's going to be a $25,000 fix to replace all the piers and beams yes. or cracks and foundations, whatever that is, like we need to understand what that is. And I think, you know, people don't like the ugly part about real estate is understanding, you know, the plumbing, um, yeah. you know, am I an expert in it? No, but do I know that there's certain things that you look for? Absolutely. Yes. There's, you know, water around the sides of the house. You have to look at all that. We know what to look for in inspection reports. We know what kind of specialists to pull in. Yes. And these are all the things that we do all the time. We are in the weeds on the non-sexy part. Yeah. Um, to try to help you find the house and make sure you understand what you're getting into. Like, would you want to be in a house and then a week later, whatever breaks, there's a yes. flood, there's a something. And you're like, how did, how did we not know about this? How do we not catch it? Well, exactly. this is why we're here to, we're this, you know, we're the first set of eyes, the second set of eyes, mm -hmm. we hire thirds and fourths and fifths sets yeah. of eyes. And I think I said this in our last podcast, I've got, you know, other realtors, not only just in my brokerage, I've got people within my brokerage. I have everyone look at my con. I've got a transaction coordinator that looks at all my contracts, right? You know, I am not perfect. I make mistakes all the time. I have messed up, you know, many, many, many contracts where I have not put in the right stuff, but it gets caught. Yes. Okay. Let's look at this. Let's go back. Let's fix this. And we catch it because I, you know, we can't, we're not perfect people. We just don't, we don't always catch everything. And yeah. that's where you have multiple sets of eyes. Look at these contracts, make sure that you call and communication is key. Yeah. Um, you know, always talking to your client. Is this what you're looking for? Is this how you want it to be worded? Because this is how we're presenting it to yeah. the seller or the buyer or whichever side you're on. And you have to make sure we're communicating correctly right of what we want what we need and we're all working together towards you know a similar goal exactly. so i think you know to go back to whether it's new york i think chicago is also an attorney state you know if we go back to the lawsuit you know what if they decide let's say for example all right i don't want to hire an agent i'd rather have an attorney do it right well the insert attorney joke here. Um, how much did the attorneys make off of this lawsuit? I think it's like 40% of yeah. 418 million. Mm -hmm. I don't know if people are upset about how much we make, but by the way, you guys, the attorneys just made a ton of money off this lawsuit. Yeah. Um, and there's going to be a thousand other appeals. I'm sure off of this, that all the attorneys are going to make lots and lots and lots of money off of. So if, if you were to hire an attorney in New York City to write your contract for you and you're like, I want you to do everything, you know, all the nuances, I want you to take care of it, but the realtor doesn't do anything. The attorney is going to get, I mean, do they get the inspector and all the other things that we would do? I mean, are you paying an attorney by the hour? What does that cost? Oh yeah. Forget about you know, it. So these are all things that we don't know yet. But I think that's something to consider if sure. it's a state like Texas, where you have realtors, but let's say you want to take the option to hire an attorney. I would research that. Yeah. What is that going to cost you per hour? And oh, yeah. there, there are attorneys that I had one almost involved in a deal and I wanted him, his, the client wanted him to look at HOA documents mm -hmm. and he said he was in Hawaii and he would charge extra because he was on <laughs> vacation and he assumed it would take about 25 hours. Oh, wow. To look at the HOA documents. I don't know what that would have cost. It worked out that we didn't end up using him, but yeah. I mean, I think we all need to consider all the different ways this can go. And I mean, if, I, I think that could get 10 times more expensive. Yeah. And, or if you don't have somebody represent you or you have somebody represent you that let's say it's a discount brokerage and they say, yeah. well, write your contract for, I don't know, $500. You get what you pay for. Exactly. I mean, just think about it. I mean, if you have some company 
that's just turning and burning contracts all day, what we've talked about the last 30 minutes, yeah. if they're turning and burning contracts and they're just writing them for $500 a piece, do you think they're paying attention to every single blank and looking out for your best interest? <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah, I mean, I just think... These are all things that we're all talking about now. And, you know, we talk about to each other as realtors. And I think these are conversations that consumers need to hear that we do feel that we deserve to be paid, whatever that is that we negotiate. Yeah. Um, that, you know, if I'm going to spend the time getting my license, getting continuing education, always being up on what's going on and yeah. always putting you first as my client. Yeah. I should be paid for that service. It, I cannot do that for free. I don't understand how anybody can think that we could do that for free or for $500. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know what the fee would be, but I just think everybody needs to think about like what's their time worth and whatever their job is too. Like, would you do your job? Yeah, you know, for free or at some, you know, work for, you know, $3 an hour. I, I don't know. I think these are all conversations that we just need to start having. Um, and, and just showing that there, there's so much nuance to real estate and there are a lot of steps to it. Is it rocket science? Not necessarily, but I think there is a personality type to it mm -hmm. and not everybody is cut out to do real estate because no, definitely not. it is emotional and it is hard. And there's a lot of balancing act. You can't get mad or upset. You're there to work for your client exactly. and you can't get mad at the other agent. You can't get mad at the seller and you have to be, you know, okay, client a, we, we have a goal in mind. This is where we want to go. And this is how we're going to get there. And we're just going to navigate the waters to get there at the yeah. best that we can. And I, it's, it's a journey. Oh yeah. I, you know, it, and it's funny that you mentioned that you go to a, you go to a, a cheap, like HR type person and you get like $500 service. I've known people who've done that. And, you know, my personal opinion is they got the raw deal. They got, they got, you know, they got really shitty work done and you know and but they were not educated in that area so they're they're you know they were clueless but they will find out in the long run down the road because you know the paperwork and everything else was not good and what they were getting they were actually getting the raw part of the deal but they weren't aware of that because they weren't they weren't educated in the real estate industry that's the problem and so it's like if they're not educated in the real estate agency, they're unaware of so many things. And that's where they have to really, you know, why take a chance? If you're going to invest so much money into a home or an apartment, you know, a luxury apartment or a nice apartment, you're going to invest so much money. You're going to go cheap on, 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 on your real estate agent, you know, like, like, think about that. Does that really make sense? You know, you, you have so many things that have to be examined. And so you don't want mistakes, you know, to be done. And you want, if, if your work, if your, your company, a real estate agent has a good company back in them and they can find mistakes before, you know, before everything goes through, you know, you want to be as well protected as possible. That's going to be your future, exactly. your home. So mm -hmm. why would you go cheap? Why would you, you know, want to not pay that, you know, 3%, 4%, 5%, 6%, you know, it's, it, it's your future. If you're going to invest in hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in a home, you know, it doesn't make sense to me to be cheap about that small percentage. Well, and then it's the, I think the thought process is too like, you know, you might be able to get a home for whatever, a thousand dollars in a fee and you get the contract written, but mm -hmm. then there's the, what happens after? Yeah. You know, once you get in, what are all the things that you start to uncover? Yes. The, what does it cost you in the long term? You know, if, things do not go well. Let's say you get the house, but then, you know, the inspector, whatever, didn't see this and you didn't have a real estate agent to that worked with you through that because a thousand dollars buys you the contract and that's it. I'm out. Bye. Right. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, it reminds me when I lived in New York City, my very first job, I worked for a very, very, very high end interior designer who only took deals that were interior design um, that were a million dollars and up for right. a, like, interior design for an apartment or whatever. Yeah. And she, anything else below that is a waste of my time. This was quite a long time ago. She was making very good money. Mm. And so I ended up doing a renovation in a co-op on uh, in Sutton Place, which was a nightmare. Um, <laughs> and there was a GC, like a company that does, um, they do like installation of artwork. And I think they install like, I don't remember what else they install, but um, I think they're called iGrace. I can't remember, but I was right. like, no, I didn't have a lot of money in New York at the time. And I asked her, I said, well, gosh, they're so expensive. I can't believe how crazy they are. That's yeah. absolutely, you know, that's ridiculous. And she, you know what she said to me, which is very true. She said, you get what you pay for. She yeah. said, Kendall, you either install it once correctly the first time. Right. Or you install it two times, three times, or four times by four different companies. And it will cost you double the price. Yes. So I think it's like that goes far in life too. Yes, it does. If you hire, you know, cousin Sammy, whose expertise is plumbing to come over and hang all of your artwork, you get what you paid for and he's going to do it for free or for dinner on yeah. Sunday night or something. So I think <laughs> that's what people also need to consider. I mean, going back again, we are you know, we're licensed to do this. We have to go through school to do this. You yeah. don't want, I, I, I don't know, who, a, a computer program to yeah. write it. Um, that's not gonna, they don't understand emotionally, no. you know, what, what you're looking for, what you want. And when I go through like a, a new buyer and I ask them, you know, all the questions, we might've talked about this on the last podcast, you know, you ask all the basic questions, you know, what neighborhood do you want to, you know, our schools are important. Do you want four bedrooms? Do you want three bedrooms? Blah, 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 blah. But yeah. then we go into the dream state of, you know, you, you tell me, oh my God, Kendall, you know, my husband would love it if we had a little mini putt golf in the backyard. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I envision myself sitting out there drinking a glass of tea, watching him, <laughs> you know, putt, putt, you know, doing a little putt, putt, getting frustrated <laughs> or whatever. Like these are things that will create memories. Yeah, there's not people like there's no AI that's going to figure that out. Right. And somebody that's not truly involved in the deal with you that are going to ask these questions like we go keep going back to these homes are emotional. It's where you raise children. It's where you have memories. It's what you create your life in potentially yeah. where you work. And there's a certain thing that you dream about in your home, how it's laid out, what kind of memories you're envisioning. And you need your agent to set, you know, to make, make them understand. Yeah. These are all the things that I see in one year, three years, five years. I want to have kids. I want to have grandkids. I want to have the Christmas tree by the fireplace because of this reason my grandmother had it. Like, these are all the things that don't sound important, but they right. are important because this 100%. is your life. Yes. And you want to have a great life with memories in this home. And I think, you know, people just need to, I think, take into consideration that there's a lot of us out there that really do care about the client and we want them to be happy and we want them to talk about us. I mean, yes. we want to, I want to be on another podcast where somebody says, yes, I worked with Kendall and she was awesome. Yeah. Like I want that. I don't, right. that doesn't pay my bills, but it's certainly wonderful to hear. And it just reinforces to me that I'm doing the right thing exactly for my client, for these people that whether they buy from me or not that, Oh, I heard this, that Kendall gave me great advice. Awesome. Yeah. That's what we're here for. You know, we should all be helping each other. You're helping your audience by providing valuable information. Right. And I think, I think people really need to understand that, that, you know, that you're, you're, that you're human, that you care, you know, you're not in here, you know, like everyone, you know, 
you, you hear so many people that they think they have a mentality. Everyone's out for them. You know, they are people, uh, lots of people out there who care, you know, that want to see the very best for you. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that's the whole thing we have to do is we have to educate these people about, you know, the importance of having a, a, rep a real estate agent represent them and why, you know, there's so many things that go into it. There's so many things that people can overlook and they could jeopardize, you know, their home. I've known people that have gone the cheap way and then later on they found out, oh, there's mold underneath the carpeting because there was, you know, in the, there was a, there was a little leak, you know, that nobody knew about in the basement, you know, that was slowly dripping in. And now they have mold underneath the carpeting and, you know, they have this whole problem they have to deal with. Well, you know, if they had the, the, the right real estate agent, if they had the right inspectors come in, if they had the right people come in, in which the real estate agent would have made sure about that they wouldn't have this problem in the first place. And these are the things we have to take an account for, you know? Yeah, and like, we're the GC of the deal, right? you know? So we're there facilitating the deal, getting all the inspectors, the maintenance people, et cetera. We also yeah. know, you know, what to look for. So I can say, you know, Ken, you, Ken all this looks weird. Is this normal? No, it's <laughs> not normal. So let's, call in somebody else and look at that. You know, it's, we're kind of overseeing the whole thing. We right. know what to look for, but it's like, I have another set of eyes that's going to look at the contract. I'm your set of eyes to watch all the other steps that go through when all the paperwork's going back and forth, you know, on roof inspections, the tree guy, exactly. whatever, at your soffits or whatever we're doing, electrical. I'm your second of, second set of eyes yeah that process to be like ah uh -uh, this doesn't look good or you know what this house looks super clean everything in here looks really good i you know if this is the house that you like i've seen a lot of inspection reports i've seen a lot of this i think this is a great opportunity at this price i think we should move forward right you know and Sometimes you need that reassurance. Sometimes you don't, but we're here for that. We're here to tell you, like I've seen hundreds and hundreds of inspection reports. We, we've seen everything, mildew, yeah. mold, bugs, wasps, mm -hmm. nests. I mean, I could go through all kinds of crazy stuff you see, mm -hmm. but so, yeah, I mean, we're, we are kind of the GC of the deal. So to say we're overseeing yeah. all the pieces to the deal to make 100%. sure that it all looks like a full circle. This is a great package. And yes, this looks like a good deal. If this is the house that you like, yes, we like it, you know, and or they'll give you a seller concession based on they want you to, you know, you can paint the house white or right. whatever. Um, so I think those are the, the things that I kind of want to get across to the consumers out there that, you know, we're out here to be your second set of eyes. We're here to protect you. We're here to guide you. Um, you know, we are educated. We, we are licensed. We are representing you. And I am your fiduciary. So it is my mm -hmm. job to protect you and to protect you from, you know, making a bad decision. If there's foundation problems, look, you can still move, move forward, but I will bring it to your attention and say, I don't feel comfortable for yeah. you to move forward if you're not going to have this repaired exactly so i think that's what people need to take into account i think most real estate agents out there are good mm -hmm. and they are out there to protect you and doing the right thing i do think that we've gotten a bad rap um, yeah over the years and I think, you know, maybe the TV shows haven't helped. Um, yeah, no, definitely maybe it's not. Other, you know, maybe there's other factors too. I'm sure there's plenty of other realtors out there that have maybe not done a great job, but it, it doesn't mean that we're the majority. Right, exactly. You know, and I think that's also, so warning to the consumer, pick the right realtor. Yeah. You know, interview them. This exactly. is a huge purchase. If this is going to be the largest purchase you're going to make, you're not going to be like, I'm using cousin Susie because mom told me to, you know what? Interview cousin Susie interview five other realtors. Exactly. And ask them, like, how do you work? 
you know, what's your process and treat them like, you know, you are employing them. Exactly. You will be paying for them. And it's, you want somebody who's going to work for you. hundred percent. And I think that's, um, yeah, I think that's, we want to get the conversation going in a positive way Yeah. that we are here to help. We're not here to hinder. Exactly. We're not here to screw anybody out of any money. We are open about what we do. We are open about how we get paid. Um, it is a negotiation. It is on our forms there. There's no secret sauce here. You, you're right. signing it. We go through everything with you. There's it's, very open information and yes. we work very hard for it. And I think that's what, you know, I wanted to talk about, say, so, you know, it's just, it's, uh, it's really frustrating to hear negative information when I think, you know, I think about our last podcast, which I got so much good feedback from and they're like, Oh, you're such a positive person. And I was like, Ugh. you know, it was great. But then it's like, you have these, news outlets and say all this terrible stuff and it's like oh my gosh it's like that's not at all what it's out to be yeah yeah and it's so unfortunate that it's out there and I don't want people to get discouraged and you still have control yeah consumers you guys have control you interview who you want to have as your agent and it should be a great process for you. And if you're not happy with whoever you've interviewed, keep interviewing. And I just want everybody to, you know, make a smart decision. It's a right. huge purchase. Exactly. And I think people have to realize that, you know, that when it comes to the, the, the media outlet, you know, they're looking for ratings. They're looking for, you know, if on TV, they're looking for ratings and on, on social media, they're looking for likes and, you know, yes. and, and looking to boost their ratings. So you're always going to hear what the consumer wants to hear. You know, they're always going to, they're always going to try to, you know, have that clickbait, that, that yes. thing that kind of draws you in, you know, but they're never going to really give you the, the true truth, you know? And that's the thing that people have to remember is what they see on the social media and what they see on TV is, is all planned. It's all scripted. It's not realistic. You know, it's, it's entertainment. There's a difference between reality and there's a difference between entertainment. And when you look on social media and when you look on these reality shows, that's entertainment. That's, you know, that's ratings, that's likes. Those are comments. Those are all go back to, you know, your rank, rankings, whether it's on TV, whether it's on, you know, on, on the social media, that's all it is, you know, and, and, you know, people tend to like also talk, they like to talk about the, the negative more than the positive, but you know what, you have to really focus on, you know, like you made great points today. I can't even tell you how many great points you made because you, you were outstanding, you know, all your information was outstanding, but it's a big investment. And you really have to, just like you said, you're paying that real estate agent, you know, interview the ones that you feel comfortable with, the ones that give you a good aura, the ones that give you, give you positive energy, the ones that look like they really care because, you know, that's the person that's going to help you get the best deal, you know, and there's lots of people out there like you, you know, so people have to really take the time to understand the importance that you need a, a realtor to represent you. Cause it, it, there's more than just, you know, you know, filling out a couple of blank spaces in a template contract and signing, you know, there's a lot that goes into it and we cut, we covered all those things today. And so people have to really listen to this, absorb it, listen to it again, if you have to, and really think about next time you're going to invest in an apartment or a house or whatever you're going to invest in the realty, realty industry, take your time to really understand everything that you're investing in and understand the importance and, and protect yourself. And your real estate agent is the one that's going to help you protect yourself. So when you look at that real estate agent and you talk to that real estate agent, think about, is this the person I want, you know, that that's going to do a good job to protect me and, and give me, you know, the best possible care that I need to make a substantial investment in my future. 
And I think, you know, I wish there was more Kendalls around the, around the United States like you, because you're amazing. You're truly amazing. Thank you. And where can people contact you? Uh, I am now all over. Uh, Kendall Travis. Um, I've got my cell phone, obviously, 917-991-5452. My email is Kendall Travis, all one word, at DavePerryMiller.com. I've got my own website, which is KendallTravis.DaveBerryMiller.com. Um, I'm on my Dave Perry Miller website, and I also have my own YouTube channel, um, which I don't remember the handle, but I think it's if you put in Kendall Travis DFW Realtor, you can find me. Um, I'm also on Instagram, Facebook. It's all under Kendall Travis. It's very easy to find. You can just put my name in and I'm on every, I just got on TikTok and that's the last, uh, most of my TikTok is with Stacy, So you can see our last time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll put, putting this one on there too. Um, yes, we so will. Yeah, I'm on pretty much every social out there now. That's awesome. You know, thank you so much, Kendall, for coming on the show. And thank you for, you know, spreading out the word because we really need people to understand about real estate and understand about the importance of a real estate agent. And you made it very clear today, all the work that goes into it and, you know, and, and how important it is to pick the right person. So thank you so much. You know, you, you hit so many points today. It's unbelievable. And they're all really good points. So thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for having me, Stacey. It was fun as usual. <laughs> Same here. I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon.